when you see a highly ranked site on top of Google search engine results for, say, teak garden furniture, what Google's looked at is Google has looked at what we call the backlinks into that site. In other words, which other sites in the web have linked into that particular site. What it then does, it makes an assessment of each one of those sites and it assesses how trustworthy the site is, how much authority the site actually carries and how much relevance it actually carries. And it's got a very sophisticated algorithm for actually weighting that information. So, the reason why you think that SEO, search engine optimization, getting on top of Google is difficult is because when you look at the backlink structure for your favorite competitor, Google won't tell you all the, who the backlinks are. It knows itself, but it won't tell you. So what we've done is this. We've re-indexed the web. We have a, a web map that's approximately the same size as, of Google's. We know the amount of sites that are linking into your competitor's sites. What we've then done with very, very clever mathematics is try and simulate parts of the Google algorithm. And then what we do is we present you with a list of all, the, all your competitors' inbound links, and we actually we curate them. So we divide them into blogs, we divide them into news sites, we divide them into PR distribution sites, wikis, everything that you could possibly imagine. We then tell you, we'll then allow you to click through from a graph and fundamentally we'll give you a list of sites that you need to have a relationship with in order to get your own site up in the top of Google. In the top tab navigation you'll see that there are seven areas that form the core of LinkedIx. In launching this new software, LinkedIx want to demystify the process of search engine optimization and make it easy for companies to do it for themselves. But surely not everyone can end up in the number one slot at the top of a search page. This is all about choosing the keywords, your target keywords for your business. So, for example, if you're selling teak garden furniture, that's not the only keyword you'll want to be found on. Teak, cheap teak garden furniture, teak garden furniture UK, teak garden furniture Reading, teak garden furniture Doncaster, um, pre-prepared teak garden furniture, flat pack teak garden furniture. For every business we've ever been exposed to, I'd say probably the average, there are an average of about 100 keywords that would describe what your business does. So, for example, Sky, there are probably a million keywords that would cover off you in Google to describe actually what your business does. And actually, the more keywords you've got, what's what called longer tail, especially the ones like, for example, flat pack teak garden furniture, that's actually quite easy to achieve for because it has less competition. So, if you took a million businesses and say that actually there are 100 keywords, 100 keywords for an average for each business, that's 100 million opportunities to get on top of Google. Google's range of search, apart from the volume, which is stupendous, the, the breadth of search in terms of those keywords is, is staggering. There are plenty of web myths around how to do SEO on the cheap. Putting keywords in white lettering in white space was one rumour, or stuffing the header area of your page with your brand was another. If such tricks ever worked, they certainly don't work anymore. Google's algorithm is astonishingly sophisticated. What you could do five years ago, you cannot do now. Um, and in fact, if you try and do it, you will get penalised uh, for doing so. so that was the case five years ago. Now there is another temptation that could lead you theoretically into fast Google results. And that is a lot of businesses are asked if they would like to buy links from sites which are trusted and which are uh, authoritative. Um, Google hates this. Um, actually, we are pretty anti it as well. And the reason we're pretty anti it is because Google is just getting cleverer and cleverer and cleverer. And actually, they'll find you. They'll actually find you buying those links and they will actually degrade your much hard work for top positions on Google. We've seen this quite a few times. Um, our advice is not to buy those things. You know, if I could ever say anything to anybody, if you really want one thing that gets you on top of Google, you need to get the attention of the crowd. You need to be, keyword here, remarkable in the true sense of the word. So if people out there remark about your site, then when they remark, they'll normally put a link into you. And of course, they're doing it in context of your site as well. And then you get lucky because then you'll actually find some sites which are actually very authoritative. And to make your site really remarkable, good or interesting or useful graphics, entertaining video, tools that people might come to and crucially link to can all be useful too. And John maintains that SEO is not something you should do once and then forget about. Being on top of Google, it's a through time activity, not an in time activity. You can't just do it for three weeks and say, where are my results? Actually, I know businesses that have got dedicated people in it now uh, that will do it over a period of time. And another tip here is actually um, interns. 
are really, really useful for this sort of thing. They get great education from it. They get to understand how search works. Um, PR interns, really very useful here because they're going to be in their career build relationships with people. So actually, you can distill this down. In many respects, being on top of Google is about PR. It's about building relationships with people and sustaining those relationships over time.